Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be available on our website uh, later for you to watch at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So uh, please share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, similar to other states' state libraries. So we provide services to all types of libraries in the state. So um, you will find shows on um, our topics on our show for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, um, museums, archives, corrections, uh, tribal, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we really uh, run the gamut. We have um, book review sessions, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Um, sometimes we bring on a Nebraska Library Commission staff to talk about services and programs and the things that we're offering here through the commission, but we also have guest speakers as we have this morning. Uh, with us today is Suzanne, ah, Suzanne I can't even talk. <laughs> Uh, Macaulay, who's from the um, Pioneer Library System in Canandaigua, New York. Good morning, Suzanne. Oh, good morning. Thank you for having me. And she's going to talk to us about how we can tweak our library social media, which is a hugely important topic. It has been forever, for a long time. <laughs> um, but things are always changing, and the uh, situation is changing, what's available is changing, and she's going to give us some ways that we can make it work even better for our libraries. So I'll just hand over to you, Suzanne, to take it take it away. Sure. All right. So thank you, everyone, who's joining us today. Um, I'm going to be just talking a little bit about the ways social media has kind of changed over the past couple of years and just simple tweaks that you could make to your social media, um, the way that you're posting or the accounts that you're posting to, to hopefully get a little bit more engagement, a little bit more reach. Um, I know for many of us, it seems like we're just sort of like yelling into the void right now. So hopefully you'll be able to get some takeaways from this today. Um, oh, hold on, let me just... There we go. Okay, so a little bit about me real quick. Um, I am the Deputy Director of the Pioneer Library System, but actually as of five o'clock today, my title will be changing to Program Director, and we just rechartered and we're gonna be the OWL Library System. So if you see me at a future thing, um, it's a lateral move and it's a recharter, but it's still the same organization that I'm working with. We just have like a dual identity we're sort of getting rid of. So, okay. um, so but, is, is it congratulations or just? <laughs> yeah, it's all exciting stuff. Yeah, it's, and that's what I, it's just like social media. These are just the things that sort of changed with COVID, you know, and so, sure. um, yeah. So, so that will be an update. But right now, since that didn't happen officially yet, I'm like, I kept my old stuff up. But at the uh, Pioneer Library System, we partner with 42 small and rural libraries. We're across four counties, um, Ontario, Wayne, Wyoming, in Livingston. Most of them are classified as um, small and rural, and I'll show you on the next slide. And the things I do here is I do coordinated outreach, youth services consultants, so I liaise between our system and the state on a lot of things, like state aid for library construction. I organize the continuing education and workshops for our member library staff. Social media and communications, I talk about donuts a lot all the time on all of our meetings, I think, that we have. And I also co-chair um, ARSEL's Marketing and Communications Committee, and that's the Association for Rural and Small Libraries. And this is a little bit, this is where our library system is. I'm originally from downstate on Long Island, but now I am upstate. And we're sort of sandwiched between Syracuse, Rochester, and Buffalo, which are sort of like some upstate major cities. But our libraries are small. We Our smallest one serves 325 people. Our largest one serves 25,000. Most of them fall in the two to 5,000 range. So when I'm presenting on social media, a lot of that information is targeted towards those libraries. So if your library is bigger than that, sometimes the things I'm saying, you might have to scale up a little bit, but it's really mm -hmm. for those libraries that, you know, maybe they have one person that works there, the solo librarian, or one full-time, or, or there's only, maybe there's a team there, but only one person is doing social media so a lot of it is like geared towards stuff that like one or two people could reasonably do and we'll talk a little bit about capacity um, in these slides 
Uh, and I have presented on social media a lot in the past couple of years. Um, this is, I think, a sampling of the social media presentations I've done. I've written a couple of articles on it, but uh, everything has changed, right? So I feel like all those presentations, I can just kind of like throw in the garbage. I feel like a lot of the content from the past couple of years is really not relevant. And if you've seen me speak um, on social media before, and I do recognize a couple names from um, my system that are in the attendee list, so thank you for coming. Um, you'll see a lot of stuff that I am going to say today goes against previous stuff I said, and that's okay, we're always changing. Um, this is a tweet that I really like, but you know, it shows that like you could have your social media, like you were super dialed in and you had a plan and it worked and you knew what hashtags and you knew what time to use, um, to use social media and what time to post. But, um, now it's like, I don't, I don't even know what's happening. I don't know what works anymore. And you know, I don't know what to do. And so today I'm just going to present, I think a couple ideas that could maybe help and help you tweak your social media a little bit. So like, what can we do about all these changes that are happening in the world around us? Really? Absolutely nothing. Like they're just going to change. Things are going to happen. We could not have predicted anything that was going to happen to us. But again, we can make slight adjustments to how we're using social media um, and how we're trying to reach our communities. And then hopefully, you know, we can start to get some of that engagement, you know, back a little bit. But the things that we do know. Over the past 24 months, social media became the go-to place for news, information, entertainment, and human interaction. So people that hated social media before were almost like forced over like the course of the pandemic. So that's where they had to go. They, you know, especially if you were in a place that had really strict lockdown, we were in New York, everything was shut down for a really long time. We couldn't go anywhere. So where were we gonna go? We were gonna go on social media. I mean, we even uh, bought our, uh, my youngest a phone during COVID and, the other two didn't get them till they were teenagers and she was 10 at the time, but that was like the only way that she could interact with her friends. So a lot of people that didn't use social media, suddenly we were on social media. And we're gonna talk a little bit later though, how that made social media super crowded. And now it's kind of hard. Um, I think a lot of us are getting lost in that like information overflow. And experts predict that while time spent on social media may eventually dip, it's going to remain higher than pre-pandemic. You know, as of right now, especially, you know, I know where I am, things feel like they're getting finally back to normal. Things are on the calendar and they're staying on the calendar. They're not getting canceled. So we might have less time for social media, but it's not going to go back to where it was. People are still online um, more than they were. So social media has changed and will continue to change. Libraries have changed and will continue to change. And library users have changed and will continue to change. Um, things are always going and moving and evolving. And the way we use social media, even six months ago, 12 months ago, isn't really going to work for us anymore. And then another thing that um, I think we do know now is that social media users typically have limited attention spans. I know the way that I use social media now is very different than I did before. It's really hard to like, I'm just scroll, 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 scroll. Like I don't really like look at what I'm looking at. I'm just kind of like, I don't have the attention span to read a big paragraph of text. Like I just need to like scroll and look at stuff and it's gotta be something that grabs my attention. And then our small and rural libraries, which you know these presentations that I do are typically geared towards, have limited time, personnel and budgets. So those are the things that we do know. And now we just need to decide, you know, as a library, what is your goal for social media? What are you trying to accomplish by using social media? What does your audience want or need from you? And what can you reasonably start and sustain? I know during COVID, when all of our libraries were, you know, we were working from home and, you know, we all started YouTube channels and we were all doing programming virtually. And, and I don't think that we should drop all of that together, but can we sustain doing that level of programming online and mixing in in-person programming? So where is that balance going to be? If you started like a TikTok and a Pinterest and like all these other accounts, like can you sustain those now that um, things sort of, our schedule sort of seem to be going back to the way they were and balancing now that in-person and that online presence. So just thinking about what you can do. So you have to kind of, interact directly with the community members, you know, by using social media, but 
you know, again, balancing that with people now are coming through your doors again. You go to conduct outreach on a shorter, to a long-term basis, especially there are still homebound patrons, whether those are temporarily homebound, they're still not comfortable going back out into the community, or these are a long-term homebound situation. You know, being online does help keep the library relevant. We'll talk a little bit about that. You demonstrate the library's continued value, and you can inform your community of upcoming events and programs. So these could be some of your goals, and these are all valid reasons to use social media, but I think you just have to like pick and choose wisely. And then you have to find out what the patrons needs and wants. And when I go out and visit our libraries, um, something I hear over and over again is like, we just don't know what the patrons want anymore. We don't know what they need. And, um, and so that's, it's hard. It's hard to figure out what you're going to be offering online and what you're going to be offering in person. And, you know, just finding out what you can do for your community again. So some of the ways you can find out is what I call like low key social listening. There are social listening tools. I think those are very time consuming, especially if you are the only person that uses social media for your library. So you don't have to invest in all that, but just kind of poke around on social media. And, you know, if there's like neighborhood groups or community groups or school districts groups, just kind of like see what they're talking about. What are their concerns? What are they saying that they need? Because sometimes you know, you'll pick up on something. It's kind of like mining for ideas, right? Like you'll pick up on something that someone says, and you're like, oh, actually the library can provide that thing that this parent was talking about on the school district Facebook group. So just kind of like monitoring what those conversations might be online, um, not necessarily on the library's page or in any groups that you offer on Facebook or other social media sites, but what they're saying in those other groups that are adjacent to your library. Uh, and what, you know, and what conversations is your community having? Uh, what other group, what are other groups providing in your neighborhood? Are there ways to sort of partner? Like we've noticed um, here at the system that uh, one of our counties, it's for in Wayne County, they've been really great about getting back out into the community, offering services. And then so we found a way to partner with them. So we were able to connect with a lot of people. We've been going to our drive through food pantries. They had a program at like a dentist office recently that we were at. So just like, what are other groups providing? And then maybe you can find avenues for partnerships and then tap into what the patrons need and want. Identify and engage your power users. Chances are, even if your door counts have dropped off and have not yet recovered post COVID or like coming out of COVID, um, I'm sure at least one or two of your power users have returned to the library. So engage with them and ask them, you know, what do you need? What are people saying? Why aren't people coming? And sort of try to get them to tell you what's going on in the community. And then maybe they could also, you know, help you get people back. You can say, oh, if you come to story time, please tell your friends, please tell someone from your play group, please tell someone from your preschool group. So sort of like help those power users that have come back, like find out what other people need and help them maybe draw some, help have them help you draw some people back into your library. But just don't be afraid to ask, like be direct, like what do you need from us? What can the library provide for you? You're not mind readers you're not expected to be so just go ahead and ask those questions and i know we've had some I, multiple libraries in nebraska who had mentioned about when you telling the community what's going on and what's happening at the library now and what's changed that even after libraries had reopened um with you know either minor smaller services or just anything some people still thought they were closed from when yes. they closed way back in like early 2020 and it's like months later six months later a year later and people say oh we didn't know you'd reopened we've been doing things for six months now we've had story you know and you know with you know with, with you know all the precautions but you need to talk you need to reach out to anybody who can help you spread the word because it you'd never know if your what you're doing is getting where you where you think it needs to be yeah, and I think, and sometimes it's like, well, we posted on social media that we're back open, but A, like not everybody's on social media, but exactly. B, social media, again, is so crowded right now. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times your stuff's not popping up in their feed like it used to. Mm -hmm. And which social media? There's so many different services out there and different people may be looking for you in different places. You have to figure out where are your patrons? What are they using? Are they using Twitter? Are they using Facebook? Are they using Instagram? 
probably using all of it and oh my gosh, I don't even want it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then the, you know, then then you really have to decide like, all right, what's gonna be like the biggest return on our investment, like your time investment? Mm -hmm. Like exactly. You know, and I've always recommended just doing I mean, if you can only do one social media, then just do one, that's fine. But maybe do two or three and just do mm -hmm. you know, don't do ten. I mean, I think especially just depending on your size, that's just uh it's not sustainable for most most library workers. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So during, so this kind of shows the shift in social media at the onset of COVID and how things changed. And this is what the experts are saying. It's still kind of like this and it's still going to be like this. And, you know, things may dip and may shift back slightly the other way, but, um, you know, you could see how much everybody was on Facebook, but then you could also see like that increase um, for TikTok. And we'll talk a little bit about why there was that big increase in TikTok uh, in a second. But, you know, this other one shows like, again, the average number of minutes we were on social media every day in 2020. And again, as we start to resume our normal activities, these numbers are going to dip, but they're still really high and people are still online. And I used to say all the time that Facebook was king. If you could just pick one, pick Facebook, I still kind of feel that way, but I don't think I would call Facebook king anymore. Um, it's still, I guess, top dog, but um, you know, like TikTok is gaining ground and like Twitter, people, a lot more people on Twitter. Instagram is still kind of a weird place for libraries, I feel like. Um, in my experience, I feel like it's libraries following libraries and supporting libraries. Like <laughs> it's less community members, but that's okay too. <laughs> um, and then And then there's Snapchat, so. So during, so this is me, during COVID, um, you know, it was like I would spend, so I had, I had my at-home work desk and I would have on one monitor I was working, on the other monitor it was um, pretty much the live screen, stream of our governor, like his daily update. So it was like Cuomo all day long. And then I had a small TV set up where I was watching CNN all day. So it was like this constant. And then I had my phone where I was doing all my socials and it was this constant, like what's going on, what's happening, what's the update. At the end of the day, I just wanted to sit and watch TikTok. And so the Post on the left, uh, the, the caption on this, it was from my Instagram, but it said, this is my new TikTok watching chair because we were having work done on the house. That was the new room on the house. And then that was me three hours later still in that chair watching TikTok. And I think a lot of people sort of got a little addicted to TikTok because it was fun. The videos are so nice and short. They're engaging. They're funny. They're mindless. Like it's not like it wasn't like the heavy news that was like in our Twitter feeds, in our Facebook feeds. It wasn't seeing and it wasn't you know mm -hmm. the governor like it was like a nice break from everything and I think people really appreciated having like this space where it was just fun and I know like I definitely would get sucked into it I was like I'm gonna watch I'm gonna just watch like nine nine videos I'll just you know or 20 minutes and the next thing you know it would be hours and it was just because it was like a break from everything else and I think that's a big explanation for the big jump in tw uh, in TikTok and why TikTok is still, you know, really relevant because some the news still isn't super great all the time and people do need a break. So this could be Absolutely. a place where you're like, what do my patrons need and want? They want to have fun. Like maybe we were thinking about starting a new social media account. Maybe this is where TikTok comes into play <clears throat> for your library. So that's just something to consider because what are the patrons needs and wants? A lot of times they're exactly what you need and want. Like I needed like that space that was just fun. It was mindless. It was entertainment. It was a break from the news cycle. It was really heavy. And TikTok was that for me. So what do you need? Chances are your patrons need the same thing. So it's not maybe all that much of a mystery when we're trying to figure out where to go with our social media and how we're going to communicate with our patrons. So the next couple of slides, and they all start with the letter C, like the things that I think patrons need and want. That wasn't to be like clever or funny. They all just ended up being C. So, so the first one is care. So just be mindful of your content. Be careful like what you're posting. Is it you know, is it going to be something that's like a little like too heavy? Is it like, you know, is it 
going to cause people a little bit of stress. Like people are still recovering. They're still really fatigued from everything. So I just think put an extra layer of care, something that you would have posted before just may not sit super great with people now. And, and if you're not sure, always ask someone like, do you think this is okay to post? Like, I'm not quite sure. And, um, you know, every once in a while there's that post that like, you can't quite put your finger on, but it doesn't feel super. You're like, I don't know if this is cringe. It might be cringe. So don't post it. So I think just that like extra taking an extra beat when you post certain things now um, could be really helpful to people. You know, like, why are you posting? Like, what is the purpose of this post? Does it inform, entertain, help guide, educate, raise, increase awareness? Is it relevant, accurate, useful? And is it easy for people to understand? I think that we've all seen those posts where you're like, I don't understand what's going on here. And that goes back to people being really tired too. Like they don't want to have to decode what you're trying to say. Like they just want to like look at your post and be like, cool, story time cool, new large print books. Like they don't want to have to put a lot of work into reading your social media posts because all day, every day is a lot of work now. And we're still being bombarded with a lot of information. So you should make what you are posting really easy for people to get and for them to understand. And just because you can post it, should you post it? There are times that like I will see things that are posted, not just from libraries, but like other like organizations that I'm like, maybe that would have been better on that person's personal page and not posted on behalf of the organization. Like certain jokes sometimes, like, yeah, it's kind of funny, but is it something that should have been posted from a library, from like, I don't know, like a school, from something? Like sometimes certain things maybe just stay on your personal account and some things go on the library account. And, you know, and especially like certain jokes too, like, yeah, it's kind of funny, but I don't know, like just be mindful again. It goes back to that, like, just because you can, should you, is this going to sit well with everybody in your community? You know, we're all tired. We're all a little bit sensitive right now. You know, we just want to make sure that your social media content is making your patrons feel good. Like digital burnout is a real thing. And people I think are really starting to assess like the content that they view online and how it makes it feel. I know that like, I, I have gone on like huge unfollowing sprees, like, because, you know, it's almost like the Marie Kondo thing. Like if this doesn't bring me joy on, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, I'm done with it. I'm, you know, I'm going to unfollow and you don't want to be that for somebody. Like you don't want to post something, um, and then like people are like, you know what, like the library is not making me feel super great. And, you know, and this could be maybe like not lecturing people on how to use the library or not lecturing people like, you know, all caps, like do not put donations in the book drop. Like I get it. We don't like that. That is like a really annoying, but maybe instead you're like, oh, we have a new policy for donations. Click here. And then you have a link going to your website. And then that information is on the library website, but like not like scolding people so much on Facebook. And I do sometimes see it from libraries. There's a little bit of like finger wagging at patrons um, and some like all caps. And, um, and I understand we want to try to get the word out. We want to try to educate, but people are digesting the information on social media a different way now. And um, if I like was like, why is my library yelling at me in all caps? Like that might be an account that I don't really like want to follow or engage with anymore. Mm -hmm. So good vibes only on your social media. <laughs> yeah, I know I get caught up in the, 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 um, the cliche of the, the doom scrolling that everything is coming out is bad and if i get too much of that i just lug shut it down completely like i don't wait and hope oh maybe something good will come up if i've had too much i just closing twitter i just can't and but wow. if there had been more positive things in between all of the doom and gloom like hey this library's doing this little thing this library's going fine free or yeah. um, our story time did this or we had these you know this uh animal wrangler woman come and bring you know birds or whatever you know they'd be like oh that's nice it's a little light in between all of the the bad 
Yeah, so definitely. Cool. You should try it. That should be like, a, that's a great goal. Like why, what is your purpose for using social media? Like, you know, to be like that one moment of like sunshine in somebody's feed. Yeah. Like you don't want to be the final scro- straw that makes them <laughs> shut it down. Like you want to be there, like, oh, there's all this garbage. And then the library is so great. So yeah, maybe that could be like your goal when you are posting. Like the purpose here is to make someone smile today. <laughs> yeah. All right, so consistency. So this is gonna be like a little bit different from what I used to say. And so I used to say that you should post, especially to Facebook, every day, four times a day. And I used to post religiously at nine, one, four, and seven. And at the peak of COVID in New York, where last like, you know, March, 2020, April, May, I was posting up to five or six times a day. And at that time it was needed because we were telling people where they could get food, like for food distributions. Like there was a lot of community resources that we were pushing out at very high volume, like mental health resources, like just any updates we were getting from like schools. And so, but, um, that, is not a great strategy anymore. I think, again, social media is really, really crowded. So now I feel like, you know, once a day is good, but if you only post a few times a week, that's good too. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be the volume that it once was uh, because your information is just going to get lost. So throw out what I used to say and like scale back what you're posting a little bit. You want to avoid those rapid fire posts. Like I find, and this is like pre- um, pre COVID too. Like I would like, if I'm scrolling and there's like, you know, an organization that like posts like at nine, nine Oh five, nine ten, nine fifteen. 10, 15, like that used to drive me crazy. And then I used to hide them in my feed. And now they were never going to reach me ever again because I hid them in my feed. So avoid that rapid fire post. That's why I used to schedule. Um, but don't ghost your audience. Like don't post, you know, I'm saying scale back, but don't scale back where people aren't hearing from you for like two weeks either. It's just like kind of finding that balance, kind of finding that sweet spot. You know, maybe right now what really works well for your library is posting Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at 9 a.m. Like that, maybe that works really well for you now. So just just trying to find that balance between like, you still want to communicate with your community, but people are overloaded with information right now. Because again, like if you are posting too much, everyone else is also posting too much. It's just getting lost out there. And something to experiment with and see when are people responding to your posts to see when is the best time? Like when do you get the most, uh, somebody noticed and hit a like or something or a share on one of your posts? You know, if it is always first thing in the morning, then you know their eyes are on it then. But if nobody ever, you know, there's no reactions at that time of day, try a different time of day maybe and see if that's when everyone's looking. Yeah, and then what works sometimes in some communities um, doesn't really work in others. Like sometimes that nine o'clock is a great spot because it's like right when everyone's hitting their desk and no one really wants to work yet. So they're on social media, but maybe in other places it's like, oh, after lunch, a lot of people are online scrolling and you can look at those, you know, um, I mean, it's if you have Hootsuite or even the back end of Facebook, like you can kind of look at those and I glance, I don't really spend too much time looking at um, the metrics behind the scenes. I think I could get a pretty good feel just based on how many likes and shares that we had. Um, yeah. if people like it. So if you don't have the time to do those deep dives, the, you know, don't sweat it too much. Just kind of, you know, see like, you know, how much, how much do people like it in real time? Mm-hmm. Um, So consistency. So a regular posting schedule lets your patrons know that you are there for them. Um, So you could schedule your post. That's really helpful. This way you don't forget. But be really flexible, I think, with your scheduling now. You don't have to be quite so rigid. Like I said, I seven days a week, you know, nine, one, four, and seven. And it was like, and even if I was going to go on vacation, I would schedule like the two weeks out. Like I was always scheduling and it was like, I was super rigid about it. But then like some stuff can like happen, right? Like and then now you have stuff scheduled out and the whole world changes overnight. And I and you might have to adjust what your posts are gonna be, or you might wanna take something down that you had scheduled. So this is the post that we had scheduled after January 6th um, last year. So like this huge, you know, the thing happened in DC. And then like the next day our post is like, are you feeling burned out? And it just seems sort of cringy because it was like, uh, people are feeling a little bit more than burned out today. Like it just, like it just was like when it, like the post came out, we were all just like, oh, I can't believe it. Like, 
So make sure if something huge happens and you have your stuff scheduled, go in a Hootsuite, maybe reschedule it, maybe take it down. Because like, even though this isn't terrible, it just seems slightly off given the events of the day before, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, you know, when you everything. Be, just, oh, yeah, it should, yeah, you need to be aware of what's going on outside <laughs> of your library and understand, you know what, we can wait a few days to push this. This is not does not have to go out that day. Yeah, yeah, and it was like, you know, I mean, and then maybe that day is a day that we didn't post anything, and that's okay, too, like, because you don't mm -hmm. have to post just to post, but, you know, it was like, oh, this was like this thing that was happening, and so it was just a little cringy, um, so just make sure you're keeping on top of that if you do post, um, schedule posts out. So let me see, we did care, we could did consistency. So now we have connection. And it's I think it's important now more than ever to give your audience a personal touch when you're posting to social media. Um, the biggest thing is avoid stock photos. And I do see kind of this a lot. Like you don't have to use stock photos of books or stock photos of people. Like if you're doing a program, like say you're doing a program on resume writing, um, you know, you don't have to use a stock photo of people in suits at computers because like, I know that would not be reflective of my community. And like, so that photo doesn't really connect with my community. Instead, maybe, and uh, you know, I'm not gonna ask maybe my patron, like, can you pose for this? But like, maybe fan out like your books on resume writing on a table and then like use that to connect. So it's still your library, it's still your collection, you're connecting to your program. But I just think stock photos don't, I mean, they look super nice and polished, but you know what, like our, kind of like mediocre iPhone photos are fine because they connect with people. They're showing their lives. They're showing their library. So like when you're going to post like even your staff, like, like pictures like these, um, they connect with the patrons more because they're like, I recognize that person. I know that person. Oh, that's my library. That's a book I read. And so I just think using pictures like this, even though they're not perfect, um, like maybe they're a little blurry, maybe they're a little crooked, but it just shows like your community, your people, your staff, your collection. And I think um, they don't have to be perfect. I think these connect better with people than stock photos. So, um, I, you know, use your displays, take pictures of your displays even just like you're unboxing your baker and taylor just take a picture of that like people are so excited and you're like you know it's just a box with a pile of books in it but people are like yay look what my library's getting so just those little tiny things i just think form those tiny connections um after being isolated for so long or disconnected from people like having that touch point i think is uh, really meaningful for people so shift away from like those stock photos and never use clip art and try to like find or create pictures inside your facilities um, post and create original content. So that's sort of related to it. So too much of a good thing. I love memes. I am like a, such a meme, like me, 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 like all day long. Like I love it. And, um, <laughs> However, there can be too much of a good thing. Um, so I think memes are, are a really great way to be like, haha, we're funny at the library. You know, like with the Bernie Sanders with the mittens and, you know, with the Wordle. And also that library on the right, like Orkney Library, their Twitter is phenomenal. So after this, go give them a follow. But, you know, just sort of like if, you know, it's a great way to be like, we're funny. It's a great way to enter the conversation. It's a great way to sort of be timely. Um, and these are ones like these, these two were not posted to our social media, but they're ones I used in the presentation in the fall. So just kind of being like, oh, you know, like we're on top of memes too. But don't please use these memes anymore. These are really, really dated. And every time a library posts one of these, somebody who I haven't spoken to in 10 years will send me like a Facebook message with like the library cake and be like, LOL, thought of you. And then I have to politely be like, LOL, libraries are so funny. But I'm like, I have seen this cake 5,000 times. Stop sending me the cake. But, you know, it's just sort of like done and it's overplayed. And I think this is where it kind of you're, 
yes, it's funny, but it's not really keeping you as relevant anymore. So if you're going to jump in on memes, kind of do like whatever is trending, but like, don't dig out the memes from like 2019 to post to your, your, um, Facebook feed anymore. I think it just gets lost in the noise and it gets sent to me also. So, <laughs> so don't send those. And also Canva. If you have seen me present in the past, I love am a Canva. huge, yes, I am a huge Canva stand. I love it. However, <laughs> everyone is using Canva right now. And if you're, take a look at your feed. If it sort of looks like this, it's like Canva square after Canva square after Canva square. Is that really creating that connection with your community? If all they're getting is sort of like this social graphic created and then that's it. Like, so, but make sure you're, you're mixing in those personal touches. Like it's not just Canva, 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 because also everyone else is Canva, 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 Canva right now. Like, you know, when I scroll through my Facebook, I can, you know, all these squares that pop up like that's canva that's canva that's canva that's canva and it doesn't really make your stuff feel that original it doesn't make your stuff really stand out from anyone else either and that's kind of like the problem right now is that social media is very crowded so using like outdated memes and jokes just relying a hundred percent on canva graphics like that your stuff's just gonna kind of get lost because i know like the way i use social media now i'm always on my phone which is why i have like this little like my thumb hurts all the time and i'm just scrolling 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 and i don't even stop it has to really catch my attention and i'm just scrolling past like these graphic squares constantly so you just want to make sure that whatever you're posting i'm more likely to stop on like an actual picture of people now and i still will look at social media graphics created on canva and i still create them on canva but I think they have been a little bit overdone. So again, just maybe making sure that your feed and what you're posting, it's like interspersed with other things and not yeah. just square after square. Yeah, mix it up. Canva is great for people um, who say, I'm not a graphic artist. I have no idea, especially our small, small libraries, one person, small staff libraries are like, how could I possibly ever do something that someone who's like, profession this is can do and canva can make you be that kind of person but get creative yeah. with it use your own like you said don't use the stock photos or things in there mm -hmm. use canva to make something look pretty but use your own photos mm -hmm. of your own you know look at the previous ones you were showing there yeah um but definitely mix it up um but it, it'll give you a lot i think give people a lot of confidence that they can create something a little fancier than yeah yeah and I know like I have definitely like I started to go the way of like all of a sudden all of our posts were things that I created on Canva, um, you know, and I was just trying to promote like different collections that we had. Mm -hmm. And then but I did notice that the more that I was posting and they looked and I thought they looked really great, most of them, <laughs> but I was getting less likes on them and less shares mm -hmm. on them as it went on. And but and then so kind of like, well, why is that happening? Why didn't people like this? I thought this was we I did one about like um promoting um ebooks in our in our overdrive collection that were sort of like, well, if you liked Bridgerton, like, you know, here you'll like these. And I was like, what is happening? Like no one really likes this one. And I just think that it just sort of got lost in the crowd. I think, you know, it it didn't really stand out from maybe every other post that we were posting so just yeah i think um we are creating wonderful things on canva and it has given us like that confidence in those tools but that can't be the only thing that we're doing and i know for me it was the only thing i was doing and i definitely saw our likes our engagement our reach going mm. down by over relying on those yeah you need variety yeah that, yeah <laughs> All right. So the other parts of connection is to try new things and have fun. You know, um, yes, we want to be professional. Yes, we're libraries, we're educational institutions, but I think we're also fun. Um, let me see. Maybe this will play. I hope this will play. So this is the Livonia Public Library. Um, they're located in our system. In 2021, they were the Rochester Regional Library Council Library of the Year. Um, they are a fantastic library, but I think part of it, um, is they really know how to have fun. And that includes the director who is in this video, but they're always making these little silly videos. And um, I love every single one. Their video that they posted when they went completely fine free was a little too long for this presentation, but I highly recommend if you go to Livonia Public Library's Facebook page and search, you know, just click on their videos, it's like right up towards the top. And like, it actually gave me like sweaty eyes. Like it was so good. I was like so touched by this video. So this is just all about creating that personal touch and that connection and showing like we like to have fun.
So that's like their director on the back left. And he participates in all these videos. So, and he's just a lot of fun and he has fun with the staff. Nice, yeah. I'm just gonna get to the part where he does the kid in play and then I'll turn it off. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So I think that's just like a really great example. Like, you know, we're a library, we're gonna provide these materials, this information, these resources, but like we could also like really have fun too. And, you know, and um, and that includes the director who's creating like a really fun, welcoming space for everyone. So I think that's just something that we could do. Like we're serious, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. So I, another scene, capacity, but this relates a little bit more to the staff and not necessarily what the patrons need. Um, and we did mention this before, but like what can your library, your library staff reasonably sustain? So if you started all of these socials during COVID and now you're doing a lot more in-person stuff, what is that balance going to be? Do you need to scale back? Do you need to say goodbye to something? Um, are you posting, you know, maybe, to Snapchat, but that's not really working for you. It's okay to let it go. It's okay to say goodbye if something isn't working for you. You know, social media is always changing. What your patrons need is always changing. What your staff can do is always, always changing. So it is okay to say like, you know what? We can't sustain this anymore. We're just gonna keep our story times going on YouTube. We're gonna keep our Twitter and we're gonna keep our Facebook. Or you know what, we're really gonna focus on TikTok for like our teens and young adults and Facebook. Like, so scaling back if you need to um, is, is okay. Like give yourselves permission to be like, this is what I can reasonably sustain. Cause it's better to do like one or two accounts really well than try to do five and like you're just like, not it's not working out for you you're not posting consistently the content isn't great nobody's really engaging with it like then that return on your investment isn't really there and just remember like you can't be everything to everyone all the time and that's okay so it's like well we have to reach the seniors on this site and the teens on this site and the families are on this site and like sometimes you can't do that for everyone you try your very best but like just focus on like what you can do and where maybe like that highest volume is the highest engagement and then maybe eventually you can expand out and increase what you're doing on social media but sometimes you just can't and again totally okay make sure you're setting personal and professional boundaries um you know, I am a very strong believer in that you maybe really shouldn't be personal Facebook friends with your your patrons because like it's really I mean it's hard when you live in that town I get it but like you know then on a Saturday night at 10 o'clock you have somebody messaging your private Facebook account like hey do you know if my holds are coming in hey are you getting this book and it's like Sunday morning and it's like can you renew these for me like those lines start to get blurred a little bit and you know again we talked about that like digital burnout like that could happen to you too and I think it's really important that you have those boundaries so like when you want to engage with patrons you're on the library account and then when you're using your personal accounts like you have notifications off or you have an away message set up so it says you know somebody messages the library it says we'll be happy to help you when we're back at the library Monday morning at 9 a.m. like making sure you're kind of giving yourself that space where you are not always working and always representing the library I you know I understand with social media you kind of every even on the weekends or when you're not working you do have to check in and see if things are going well like all of a sudden like especially like if you post something and all of a sudden like there's a lot of comments you're like what's going on did this go off the rails or is this a good thing and you kind of have to check in but I just think it's really important to have those boundaries between like this is the library account and this is my personal account and they really should not overlap at all. Um, I just think it's healthier for you. And don't get discouraged. I know sometimes like we'll, I'll talk to libraries and they're like, oh, this library, they just do like TikTok so well. And we try, that's okay. Like what works for one community is not going to work for you or yours necessarily. Don't get discouraged. Just keep plugging away and you'll find that sweet spot of what's going to work. And things do change over time. So maybe something didn't work before and it will work for you now. Or, you know, maybe you're like, oh, you know what? Like we tried this and that and it didn't work, but like Pinterest, like we started a Pinterest and it like, you know, it really took off with our craft program. So just don't get discouraged. You just try new things and, and you just see what happens for you. But don't try to be another library or another library social media account. 
So it comes back to work harder and no, it works smarter, not harder. <laughs> um, you know, what can you streamline? Are you duplicating things? I know another way that I've changed the way that I use Facebook is I no longer look at events at all. Um, so if somebody posts like an event on Facebook, I don't look at them. I, I used to look at them. I used to read them. I used to RSVP. I, ha I don't look at them at all. So are your patrons really looking at your Facebook events too? Like, so are you creating your events on LibCal, then creating a paper calendar, and then you're creating the events on Facebook? Like, can you streamline that? Like, maybe like you're just doing LibCal now, and then you're posting the link to your Facebook page and instead of creating a whole separate event. So like, what can you do to just sort of like streamline your workflow and then just like have one thing do all of those for you? Um, so, and again, like what features do your audience no longer use or pay attention to? And like, for me, it's definitely like events, but even when I think events were big on Facebook, how many times did you have like maybe 50 people click that they were gonna attend your story time and like one came? So like, you know, I don't know that Facebook events really was doing anything in, for us other than people were like, oh cool, they're doing that, but they never really had an intention of going. And like, again, where are you duplicating work? So just like kind of see like, what are you doing in-house? What are you doing online? And is there a place where that workflow can kind of meet in the middle? So, and then, you know, along with capacity and audience and goals, like what you need to do is like take all those things. And I keep mentioning that sweet spot, finding what's going to work for you. What's going to work for your library? What do your people want? What can you do? And then like finding that intersection. And to me right now, that's quality versus quantity social media strategy. So, and we'll talk a little bit about short form content, but I really think like less is more right now, posting better, posting smarter, posting less, but it's like quality posting is really your best bet. That's what's gonna get people looking at your stuff, engaging with your stuff, instead of just scrolling um, past it and kind of like not even looking at it and having these like glazed over eyes, like how I scroll every single night. So short form content is what I like to call like your fun size content. And you have your little bit of variety. You have like your original you peanut butter and your almond, <laughs> but it's like short, it's fun. It's different each time. It doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't take a lot of work. You know, it's like, uh, and this is what saw a massive rise during the past few years, right? Like those TikTok videos. I mean, they're so super short. They were really fun. Another way, like um, with Instagram, a lot of times I don't even scroll my Instagram feed anymore. I just watch everybody's stories and it's like these short stories and it's like, oh, look, they're petting a cat. Oh, look, they're drinking a beer. Oh, look, that's their morning coffee. And it's just like, and they just play for me and I'm like, you know, drinking my coffee and I'm just enjoying everybody's stories. So that's just a different way that I'm using social media. And it's, I just like that short form content. I like stuff that I can watch and I'm like, oh, that's nice. And I don't have to think too hard about it. Um, and I do think that this short form or like fun size content is going to continue in the future. I think it's a little bit more engaging because people don't have to work for it. So their fun size content, it communicates a single message. It's not too heavy on your audience. <laughs> it doesn't take too long to uh, consume. So like, I think like gone are the days are those long brick paragraphs on social media. Like people just aren't going to read those. If I see a paragraph, I'm like, nope. And I just scroll past it. Even like an email, I'm like, send me bullet points. It's just like, we've been inundated with so much information that was like really hard to parse out for two years. Like all this like health information and safety information. So like, Library information needs to be easy at this point. It needs to be light. It needs to be quick. It needs to, you know, communicate in just like a really consumable way. So like if you are tempted to post a block of text, like maybe that's something that's information that goes on your website now and you just link to it. So they're like, you know, learn more about our construction project and then you link to it and then the update is on your website. Again, quick and easy to create, so like quick little videos, and mobile friendly. I think that's really important to remember when you're designing. Um, I have like what I'm looking at off to the side here is my big, big, big giant monitor, and I love my big giant monitor, and things look so good on it. And then on my phone, it looks very different. So just be mindful that most people are looking at stuff on their phones or maybe a tablet. Like people aren't looking at like a monitor the size of a TV that you may have on your desk. So when you're designing, Remember, it's going to be shrunken down to a teeny tiny square. Um, and I just think that's important. If it's hard for people to look at because it didn't translate well to a mobile device, they're just going to scroll right past it. 
So use text sparingly. I like to do everything Twitter length, even my Facebook posts. So like when I'm doing, when I'm scheduling through Hootsuite, I like, if it's too long for Twitter, it's too long for Facebook for me. And like this way, like I know, like I'm not getting too wordy. It's not going on too long and people are more likely to stop and read it. I also read everything out loud before I post it. And if I'm going on and on and on for a really long time, I know like I need to take some stuff out here. This is like too much information. You know, make sure you're using bright quality images, nothing grainy, pixelated, stretched, blurry, watermarked, et cetera. And again, those that bonus points, use real photos with faces of people at your library in your community. And I know like with your library, with patrons, like depending on your policies, you might need photo releases or whatever, but like if your staff is comfortable, you know, using your staff, but again, your book displays, your new books, your collections, like your crafts, like post your stuff, your building, your library. And then try short, fun videos. You know, you can do Facebook Live, Reels, Instagram Stories, TikTok. These don't have to be professional. Like, that's totally okay. Like, people, like the one from Livonia, like, you know, I mean, they put music to it. But, like, you know, they didn't have a camera crew come in and film this. Like, they did it on somebody's phone, which also means that vertical videos are now acceptable. Because I remember a couple of years ago, if you posted a vertical video, people were like, how could you do this? Like, that is not how people view videos. But now it's like everyone knows. Like, you have your phone, you make a video, you post it. Like, totally acceptable. So, you know, you can experiment and have fun. It does not have to be perfect. It just has to make a connection. Basically, less is more when it comes to your social media. And it's okay to dial back the words that you're using, the number of posts, the type of posts, like scale everything back and just really focus on finding that like that quality content and that sweet spot. So some final thoughts that I have, um, borrow inspiration from accounts that you like, make sure you're giving credit though, when credit is due. Um, you know, it's really, if you see a library did something great, either, so I've done this a couple of ways. I might say like, I think that post was great. Can I share it and give you credit? Or I might say like, depending on what it was, I'd be like, can I do like, can I create something similar for my library? But if I share it, I'll just write like, oh, our friends at the Wood Library did this great thing. And like, you know, and I always kind of give credit back, um, but check with people, don't completely like 100% um, like, you know, we're, we borrow, we borrow, we libraries, we don't take. So, <laughs> so just make sure you're kind of like checking in with people. Have a flexible plan when it comes to scheduling, when it comes to content, when it comes to when you're scheduling, things are changing all the time. Um, you know, I'm sure maybe like an hour from now, some of the stuff in this presentation will be irrelevant with social media. So it's okay to do things differently than you did them a month ago, six months ago, 12 months ago. Just, you know, go with the flow. Again, consider how people consume information. What are they looking at it on? Are they looking at it on a phone? Are they looking at it on a tablet? So you just want to be mindful of that when you are designing, which is why when I do stuff on Canva, I like to make everything that square size, the Instagram size, instead of like the long vertical, because even on an iPhone, on Facebook, the Instagram size looks the best. If it's like flyer size and it's on Facebook, sometimes you have to kind of go up and down to read the entire flyer and you kind do this weird scrolly thing but that square fits fantastic on your iphone so just kind of you know consider how people are looking at what you post and create remember that not everyone is on social media so you know being like but we posted on social media like maybe that's not the only way you should be communicating it is a way and right now it is still the primary way but you know, maybe if you have a population with a lot of older adults who do still like to read the paper, you know, maybe you still need to use that as a way to communicate. Um, I have a books by mail program that I run here and uh, almost everybody that it's enrolled is a senior. And I would say um, probably like more than half, I don't know, maybe 60% do not have an email address. And like, which can, you know, and even, and that even surprised me. I was like, they, they don't have a like I expected to see maybe like some like AOLs and some hotmails, but they don't have any email address at all. So and that was really eye opening for me. And so I think we just take it for granted that everybody is online and not everyone is online. So just make sure that, yes, social media is important, but depending on your community and the demographics, you can't abandon the other ways to communicate to your communities.
Course. And I just think it's really important to have a social media policy or two, you can have an internal and an external one, or you can combine that into one policy, especially if you're doing a lot more stuff online or doing story times, like it's just important that you have, you know, like an acceptable use, like what are your expectations for how people are going to interact, but then also maybe having that internal policy, like how is your staff to use the organization's social media? I have samples of that that I can send out to people if you're interested. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I could actually, I could include links. I have links to them on Google Docs, but they're just like templates. But I think that's an important policy to have, just like you would have your meeting room policy or your code of conduct. Like social media is now another place that our patrons are gathering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having that policy is definitely important, especially when people, um, your community or anyone out there because it's it's you know, your social media is totally public not just your own people seeing it you never know who's going to be responding and how are yeah. you going to respond to um undesirable things whatever um don't go into it unplanned yeah <laughs> <Without a plan. laughs> just like any other sort of place where you may receive complaints or comments um to the library you want to have that same policy something in relation to your social media as well um too many libraries i've seen have gotten caught on you know by surprise and they just don't know what to do and they do the wrong thing they block the person or stop the commenting could have done more of an interaction it, you know you just got to think think it through just like all the other types of um comments and complaints you may receive at the library yeah, and having, having that policy really does back you up because, um, you know, depending on what type of library you are, um, you can't just go and delete something just because you don't like it, you know, it has to, um, you know, like you can't, uh, it's like viewpoint discrimination. So if someone's like, the library is a bunch of jerks, unfortunately, you kind of can't delete that, you know, like, so you have to have this policy in place that defines like what will be moderated and what is, and how, what the procedure for that is. And, you know, and then also just learning to, to maybe ignore some stuff and, um, or having like a canned response either, like, please, because if you, a lot of times if you type like, oh, um, I'm sorry you feel this way, please call me, I would love to discuss it, or please call mm -hmm. the director, I would love to, they will never call you like no. but you've <laughs> yeah. made the professional adult response yeah. to the troll or the person you know that's just like ranting whatever yeah yeah they just want to be a keyboard warrior and like once yeah. you invite them to like have a conversation with you they'll just kind of fade away too but but making sure though that all the staff that uses social media is trained on these procedures too. And they know what your policy is and they know how to handle that. Like, you know, do they know what the canned response is or does anything that gets a little testy, does that go right to the director and kind of bypass the rest of the staff? So just making sure that all the staff is on the same page with social media use. So, and also you got this. <laughs> so I think, uh, you know, social media is complicated. It's been weird. Um, but it's still where we all are and it's changing. And like I said, just go with the flow and just post and see what happens and have fun with it. And, you know, and yeah. make changes where you need to. <laughs> then these are all the ways you can get in touch with me um, if you have any questions. Um, that's my Twitter, my personal one. I post some library stuff, a lot of not library stuff, but you're welcome to follow me there, my LinkedIn. Um, and then if you wanted to follow our system right now, it's like, right now it's just like Pioneer Library System, OWL Libraries, it's like that weird dual identity. So it's a little confusing, but that's how you can get in touch with me if anyone wanted to get in touch yeah. with me about any questions from today. And what is OWL the acronym for now? Or Ontario, to... Wayne, Wyoming, and Livingston County. That's the county. So those so. are our four counties. So like they're the OWL Libraries and we're the Pioneer Library System. So like explaining that. So now we'll just be the OWL Library System. It makes more sense to everybody. Yes. Here. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we get to change our email addresses so they're nice and easy and it'll be mm -hmm. very exciting. And I do. I have seen the owl stuff, and there's a nice little owl. Low, you know, you have a little mascot now. Mascot. Yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> so it'll be fun. It's a good change. But this, this is one that we had started prior to COVID, and it got mm. put on the back burner. So it's really exciting yeah. that it's finally happening for us. All right. So, um, thank you so much, Suzanne. Um, anybody have any questions? Um, no questions came in while you were talking. Um, okay. That's okay. Um, but if anybody just want to ask anything or share anything they've done in their libraries or um, issues they've had, um, oh, you can go ahead and put your screen back up there. Keep oh, your, okay. 
yeah for now oh for my contact okay yeah yeah sure yeah we'll just leave that up for now while we're <laughs> in this, while wrapping up for a bit here um yeah. go ahead and type into your question section in your go to webinar interface um let us know if you wanted to know about something else specifically or um from suzanne or if you have any tips or tricks or things you've encountered in your libraries uh dealing with social media and how that's all all worked um so this was a great session. I think we are all, um, you know, a lot of these services have been around for years and years. If you look at people, uh, Twitter is now pushing out things to let people when they've got, reached their Twitter anniversaries, um, how long they've been on it. Uh, I think my most recent one was like 13 years, but, <laughs> but things do change. Yeah. And, and I, it's, it's very interesting. I think Suzanne, you're talking about how we used to tell people how to do social media and how it's different now. Um, and I think that people just need to roll, roll with that, roll, go with the flow of what's going on um, with it. And the key is there's not one size fits all. Each community, and this I try to um, get our libraries thinking about a lot here. And you see, the smallest libraries are looking for just give me guidance, tell me what I should do. And unfortunately, what you should do is find out what your community wants. And it's going to be specific to each community. And all of, I think a lot of all of these um, tips and resources and things that Suzanne mentioned is what you just need to do in your community. There isn't the one way to do it. See what your people want. See where they're at. See what they're responding to. Shift gears if you need to. It's okay. Um, there's not a here's the one guide on how to do everything. <laughs> it's there's all these different things you're going to have to take into consideration. And some of them will apply to you and some of them might not and that's okay just you know try it um yeah i mean even the stuff i talked about um in today's presentation like you know it, you could be like actually no we're not seeing that in our community people are still doing it this way but oh that other thing yeah that kind of actually makes sense like so not even everything yeah. here is going to be like a blanket like this mm -hmm. is all the changes in social media. I mean, this is what I've read about. This is what I've experienced, but that's not going mm -hmm. to be uniform across, you know, not even across our 42 libraries here, but then if you factor in like across the country. So, um, <laughs> so it's just kind of like maybe being aware that there maybe are these bigger social media trends and they may be happening in your community. community. You might want to look into it and see, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and see if they are coming up, all right. All right, so it doesn't look like anybody has any desperate questions or anything they want to ask or share right now. That's fine. Um, there is Suzanne's contact information if you want to reach out to her. Um, the slides that um, she used here will be available afterwards when we get the recording up as well. And um, I think you said, Suzanne, you had uh, something in a Google Docs for policies. Yeah, I have policies. a resource. I can make like a quick resource that will link out that has okay. like sample policies and some other stuff that probably I referenced today. I'll, I'll pull something together too, and I'll add it on as a last slide. And okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. So send me those slides afterwards. Usually it takes a day or so for, to get the recording all ready to go up anyway. So uh, not a problem. All right. I am going to pull presenter control back to my screen here and <laughs> There we go. And wrap things up. So thank you everybody for being with us today. Thank you, Suzanne, for um, doing this for us, um, for our small rural libraries and every size of library we can use these resources, of course. But we, just like in, in your area in New York, here in Nebraska, it sounds like a description of our libraries, <laughs> um, the, the little ones that we are here for. So um, that will wrap it up for today. Um, I'm going to go to our main Encompass Live page. Um, if you use your search engine of choice anywhere, um, you will and just search for Encompass Live, the name of our show. That's the only thing that will come up. Um, nobody's allowed to use that name. <laughs> um, but here are our upcoming shows, and I said I would show you. And here, right underneath, is linked to our archive shows. Most recent one at the top of the page. So this is one from last week. So today's will be posted up here. Like I said, within a day or so. Um, uh, you should, um, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the recording is available. Um, we'll have a link to the um, video recording on our YouTube channel and a link to uh, Suzanne's slides. So you have that for your reference. 
Um, while we're here, I'll also show you, you can search our show archives if you want to see if we've done a show on a particular topic you may be interested in. You can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something very recent. Um, that is because this is the full show archives for Encompass Live. And I'm not going to scroll all the way down because if you look over here, this is a huge list. Um, this goes back to the um, our first show, which um, Encompass Live premiered in January 2009. So uh, we are like, what, 10, 12 something years into this. Uh, so just pay attention if you do watch a recording to the original broadcast date. They all have a date on there so you know when it first happened, was first broadcast. Um, some of these shows will stand the test of time. The information will still be useful and relevant and correct and perfectly fine. But some things will become old and outdated. Some uh, products or services may have changed drastically or may even no longer exist. Uh, links and resources may be, be broken. So. Um, just pay attention if you are watching any of the, uh, the shows to that date. Um, as librarians do, we do um, keep things for historical purposes and, and as an archive, and we will, as long as we have a place to host them, we'll always have all of our show archives out there for everyone to watch. We uh, Speaking of social media, we do have a Facebook page uh, for Encompass Live. I've got links on each show page and a link here. I've got it open over here so you can see. Um, we post reminders. Here's a reminder to log into today's show, uh, meet our presenters when our recordings are available, um, anything that we think may be of interest to um, libraries. Uh, so um, if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. Uh, the Library Commission, we also use Twitter and Instagram, and we have a hashtag for the show and Comp Live, little abbreviation, so you can keep track of what we're doing elsewhere using that um, link. Oh, somebody's liking our pictures right now. Hey, <laughs> face our uh, social media in live, live, live and working. <laughs> so um, that'll wrap it up for today's show. We've got our upcoming shows here. Um, keep an eye on our schedule. I'm, I'm confirming some other shows for May. Um, so keep an eye on what that will be coming up. And our next week's show will be starting a board game club at a small library. Um, Ethan Nelson is from our Scotts Bluff Public Library, our lead Scotts Bluff Public Library out in Western Nebraska, and he's going to be talking about how they um, started up a board game club at their library, and they are a small rural library, so definitely um, sign up for that and any of our other upcoming shows we have. Um, so thank you, everyone. Thank you, Suzanne. It was good to see you this morning, um, and hopefully we'll see everyone join us on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Hi, thank you.